Florida. For those who don't know, a very good group of five team. They were 10 and two a year ago, yeah. off to a solid start this year. Yeah, and six and one versus power five teams over the last seven games. You think about South Florida and what they can do offensively, lots of plays, lots of points, but defensively, remember, this is a Charlie Strong defense, a team that has his identity. They're gonna fly around and hit some people. Yes, a very good South Florida team. I think there's a great tradition, not only of D linemen, but uh, defensive, you know, players in general. You know, I think before I got here, um, when I thought of the USF program, it was always they played, you know, tough, hard-nosed defense. And I'm very grateful for that because I, we have to earn the right to be in our meeting room. We have to earn the right to go take the field as defensive linemen for USF. I think that there's, like I said, maybe not a long tradition, but a pretty rich tradition of great players, especially that position. And uh, it's a challenge for me and my guys that I hope that we can live up to. You know, South Florida always been known as a D-line school, but as, as a coach, it's my job to keep the fire lit, you know? That those kids can go and say that what the next man did, but it's my job as a coach to keep those guys motivated, keep, keep the room from not being stale, keep the drills from not being stale, and just be genuine to those guys. When you're genuine to these kids, they're gonna run through a wall for you. heard once a, a leader is someone who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. Some people have that personality, some people have to develop that personality, but that's what leaders do. Leaders lead. They bring people with them. So Ronnie Hoggins, I think he's gained that responsibility just by how he handles his business. If you ask me, he's one of the best football players in the country. When he gets on the football field, he's the most competitive football player you're gonna find. Ronnie's one of those guys, he's not very tall, but he plays big. Really stepping into the role of being a leader. You know, sometimes when maybe it seems like we don't have the right mindset and mentality coming out into practice, he'll definitely speak up and talk. I take him over anybody in the country, the way he's playing right now. Ronnie's always been great since we were freshmen. He's always been like a guy that you could always look to and know that he'll always get the job done. I take that role personal. It's, it's a huge role. I mean, a lot of people can't say that they're a leader of a ball club, a team captain. So, I mean, it's a lot, and I take pride in it, and I do it well. We're hungry. We have a chip on our shoulder. A lot of people are doubting us, which is fine. I mean, we'll just sit back and just keep working and just reap the benefits of it. We don't mind being doubted. I mean, what's wrong with being the underdog? So, I mean, we're just going to keep doing what we do each week and going out of performing. I think the American Athletic Conference has some tremendous offenses. Uh, you know, I think it, there's a challenge every week. We're facing some draft pick at receiver or major quarterback or, you know, it, as a defensive coach, there's a lot of challenges in this conference. You know, it's, it's pretty wide open. Uh, so I think that every week, you got to be ready to play. There's a lot of pressure, you know, um, but we're right here in, in the forefront, right? It's been awesome to, to be here. Uh, now we just got to worry about getting it done. Where does strength come from? The Bulls knock off a Power 5 team in a city, for the second consecutive Your home? Or is it where you are going? And this is going for a touchdown, six for the Bulls. All the work and effort that brought you here to the moments that define you. Strength isn't about what you can do. It's about what can be accomplished as a team. A family pushing each other toward greatness to define their own legacy for a new era on the Bay. This is Bulls country. Bull strong inside USF football. Two clap to the rim, clap, two clap to the rim, clap. Woo! We got a lot of speed. A lot of speed comes out of Florida. Extremely fast. We can all play with anybody in this country. With anybody in the country. We're hungry. We have a chip on our shoulder. We continue to go out there and fight each and every day. Hey, what's wrong with being the underdog? 
no matter what it takes, we, we just gonna try to win. That's what we're gonna come out there and do and just show the world we can run with anybody. So now it's just a start, but we're gonna keep it going. It's time to you know put the lights on and, and start the show. This team is based on our defense. That's the way we feel. So we gotta find a way to get our ball back to, our, to the offense so they can make plays. We pride ourselves on takeaways. We want to get the ball back to our offense. We know how much our offense want the ball and like just put up points. So getting that ball back to the offense, man, it means a lot. I think this team gonna always have something to prove and we're gonna continue to have something to prove. So that's why we gotta come out there and just show the world that we deserve the recognition and that we can compete with any team out there. Bull Strong Inside USF Football is presented by Coca-Cola, Hooters, Tampa General Hospital, USF Health, Florida Lottery, Recruiting in the state of uh, Florida in general, you, you feel like you're recruiting the cream of the crop when it comes to high school football players. And because it's such a fertile area, everybody in the country, you know, comes here to recruit. It's great to live in Tampa Bay. I mean, it's great to live in Tampa Bay. I mean, this is an easy place to recruit. Yeah, there's just about everything you could ever want to do here. Beautiful area. You know, even though it's, we have the Florida heat, we're right on the bay, we get the breeze. I mean, it's just, it doesn't get any better than Tampa Bay. In Tarpon, they dive for sponges. It's a huge population of sponges that they get from the inlets, and so they sell them down at the sponge docks. Um, so the divers are called sponge divers. It just turned into the spongers. Leading the nation in receiving yards by a tight end with 182. Wilcox has already posted career bests, including a USF tight end record, eight grabs for a personal best 109 yards in the win at Illinois. I always knew that I wanted to play for, for my hometown team. Oh, I was a Tarpon Springs sponger for life. I knew I wanted to stay close to home and, and uh, what a great opportunity to be able to stay so close and play some big time football basically in my backyard. Right now, I'm gonna go see my mom and dad hang out for a little bit. It's my dog, Bentley. The labdoodle, but he didn't get any poodle. He just looks like a lab. My mom says we got a lemon. <laughs> He was always, always had a ball in his hand. We were, we were all sports all the time, always competitive. He loved basketball and football, but at some point, I'm gonna say maybe 10th, 11th grade, he had to make a choice. And at that point, I think he, he felt like he was better at football and he really could excel at that. So uh, I think he finally had to make a choice and his first love was football. My jersey, my home jersey, he yeah, had a, a low number in high school, but uh, I, I rolled with it have uh, a few other stickers on there from the uh, the all-star game all-star practices and stuff uh, traded some stickers with uh, some guys from the area that I just knew and stuff that's pretty cool Mitch likes to do stuff all out and uh, if he's not gonna do it all out he's probably not gonna do it Football came into Mitchell's life from a very early age. We always had a football around, so we were always doing something together. We have been to many games. We tailgate beforehand at, at an extensive level. We love USF. Chuck and I went to the first USF football game, and that was actually the same year that Mitchell was born, so we never knew that uh, someday we would have a, a football player at the same school. Football is, is a means to develop young men, and I think that's a key thing. How do they evaluate where they're going? What are they gonna do after their football? So there are so many opportunities to 
explain certain things and expose young men to some great lessons, and that was important to us. Football is one of those games, it's a lot like life, in that you have to take what you've been blessed with and given in terms of statue, skill set, and kind of tweak it and, and use it to the best of your ability. And it just teaches them life lessons, and it teaches them, you know, from you being a team player, and it's, it's not all about you as an individual, it's, it's you can't, no one person can do anything. It's just like life, you're not going to be given everything but you're gonna to have to work around some things in order to accomplish your goal. It's the same thing with football. So this is, this is the old stomping grounds. This is where it all happened. Went down, Friday night lights out here. I mean, there's nothing better than high school football when you're growing up. Sponger Field, and being back here is just like, reminiscing definitely so everything looks smaller though like maybe I just got bigger Mitch Wilcox is a Mackey Award candidate for the second straight season the junior tight end showed all the signs of a huge season during spring and fall and he's been delivering on that promise early in 2018 I think my first really good memory seeing my family at the game was probably the first year I started playing after my redshirt season, uh, we were at Cincinnati and I ran out and my family is originally from Ohio so I had a really big crowd of family there and um, I just remember running out and I looked over and, and there's just like a big group of my family just sitting there like all, all waiting at attention like what's he going to do? Like they're all there supporting me so that was cool. I got to go. I got. Uh, like team meeting and stuff. All right, man, good luck at you. Tell him I said what's up, though. All right, bro. Hey, what's your name? Mitch Wilcox. Oh, I know. <laughs> Wait, Wait, you know. You want to try it? Yeah. Dude. I know that, man. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I don't even know them. <laughs> Times change, little guys. This segment of Bull Strong Inside USF Football is presented by Tampa General Hospital. Venerable Soldier Field in Chicago, but on this September weekend, an invasion of green and gold descended on Illinois, hosting a game there for just the fourth time in school history. Lately, venue doesn't seem to matter much for these South Florida Bulls who have roamed their way to 30 wins in their last 36 games throughout the South, North, East, and West. They were also looking for their fifth straight win against a Power 5 opponent in their final tune-up before American Conference play begins. Six and one versus Power 5 teams over the last seven games. You think about South Florida and what they can do offensively, lots of plays, lots of points, but defensively, remember, this is a Charlie Strong defense, a team that has his identity. They're gonna fly around and hit some people. And they elected to have that opportunity sooner rather than later. South Florida has won the toss. They have deferred, and so the Illini will get the ball first, Jay. A bad snap goes over Rivers' head, able to collect it, and now he is piled up. So a loss for the Illini in inauspicious first offensive snap. On third and 18, Rivers under pressure and able to elude it. Fires downfield and overthrows his wide receiver. And so the Illini three and out on their first possession. Forcing Illinois into fourth and long is nothing new for the USF defense. They are among the nation's leaders in sacks and tackles for loss. It was a good start for them, one the offense hoped to match. Scrambles and fires complete. That is McCants, and he is knocked out at about the 27. A week earlier, quarterback Blake Barnett engineered a fourth quarter comeback against Georgia Tech, but this time he was hoping to get the jump on the Illini early but a promising opening drive would stall in Illinois territory. But they are going to go for it on fourth down. Fires, it is 
is complete and a first down to his big tight end you were talking about, Mitchell Wilcox. There is a flag on the play. Looks like it's going to be USF. The flag negated Wilcox's catch for a first down. The Bulls had to punt, leading to the game's first touchdown and a 7-0 Illinois lead. This crowd coming to its feet here at Soldier Field. Barnett rolling out, dumps it off for Wilcox. Can he get there? He does. South Florida moves the chains. And inside the five goes Randall St. Felix, first in goal for South Florida. Jordan Cronkite needed one play to answer the Illinois score. He would rush for a career-high 136 yards. So just like that, South Florida able to strike back. Jordan Cronkite, the touchdown run, and the Bulls are on the board. Rivers dragged down there at the 40-yard line. Ronnie Hoggins, the leader of the defense. Rivers fires it and incomplete. The Bulls did not allow another touchdown in the half, but Illinois kept pecking away with field goals. While the usually potent South Florida attack was stuck on seven, the Fighting Illini kicked three unanswered field goals, one from 53 yards, and USF would trail at halftime for the first time in the season, 16 to seven. At the break, head coach Charlie Strong had a simple message, finish the game. His defense continued to make stops while the offense had the confidence it needed, having just erased a double-digit lead a week earlier in the fourth quarter. The Bulls played hard until they got their break, or more accurately, made their break. Quarterback Blake Barnett was on his way to conference honors as co-offensive player of the week. The Bulls had been getting the yards and would pile up 626 of them. Now they were about to get some points to go along with it. Mitch Wilcox setting a school record with eight catches by a tight end. As we head into the fourth quarter, 11th play of this drive for the Bulls. Barnett rolling to his left, throws into the end zone, Solomon, and it is a touchdown. In two games, 28 unanswered points by the Bulls on the opposition in the fourth quarter. Halftime adjustments by the coaching staff, mental toughness by the players to play the full 60 minutes, had South Florida in position to come from behind again. So third down and four for the fighting Alana from their own 35. Rivers dumps it off, and they can't get there. USF in business. On first down, Barnett. Gonna go deep. And what a catch by St. Felix. First down inside the 15. It is Kobe Weiss, 26 yards. This one is good. Weiss filling in for the ill Jake Vivanetto had pulled the Bulls within two. First down now, Barnett. No one open, Barnett. Throws it up there and it is caught. Tyree McCants coming down with it. Third and long for the Bulls. Here's Barnett. Steps up in the pocket and throws. Got a man wide open. Solomon, touchdown, USF. 50 yards. In three games, Barnett has thrown seven touchdown passes to five different players. A great way to make new friends. And he spread it around again on the conversion. So Cronkite alongside Blake Barnett. And they get the two points. And St. Felix has it in. For the second straight week, Barnett and the Bulls had come back from a double-digit deficit in the fourth quarter. And Lovey Smith's team is down six. Here's Rivers. Under pressure, and he is sacked. Kirk Livingston.
perfect 3-0 heading into conference play. Bull Strong Inside USF Football is presented by Coca-Cola. Hooters. Tampa General Hospital. USF Health. Florida Lottery. The Bull Strong Inside USF Football Post Game Report is brought to you by USF Health. You know, some games you get into and you're just going to have to battle. And, and uh, I told our team, you're going to get your best today from Illinois. You watch this the way we played that first half. Never had so many penalties. You look at where we are with penalties. You know, first two games, we don't have many. Then we get into this game and we have just too many. Just stopping drives, you know, throwing interceptions. You know, weren't able to stop the run. They're on defense getting out of our gap. But this is a lesson well learned. And it's a good uh, thing that we came away with a victory. You know, I just love the way we competed there in the end. You know, being down with 19 to 7. You know, two straight weeks we've had to battle back in the fourth quarter. You know, we still have a long ways to go. We are, you know, there's no excuses, but it's, it's, you know, the day is on me and the coaching staff. We just didn't have our team ready to go. I mean, I didn't think we came out focused as a ball club all together, all three phases of the game. But uh, throughout the game, we started to lock in and focus, and we came out with the win. Yeah, I, I didn't like how we came out the first half. That wasn't us. That wasn't us. Was, we play defense down here. So I feel like I, I, I see where he was coming from, why he was upset with us. So we'll get it corrected. We need to come out uh, more aggressive and um, just have more sense of urgency about ourselves and finish drives. We were going down there and stalling and not uh, putting the ball in the end zone. And he just, he just told us to finish the game. Five inches on a throw that makes a difference. Um, so just little things, cleaning up the details. Uh, we have to do better. We can't keep putting ourselves in this situation. So, you know. Obviously, everyone's ecstatic and over the top. It was a very dramatic and emotional game, but you know we have to come out and we have to come out, you know, stronger at the start of the game so we don't put ourselves in a hole. Uh, well, we came back and it, it shows a lot of resiliency, I think. And uh, we just all looked at each other in the in the locker room during halftime, and it was just like, we got to get this done. There's a lot of good individual individual performances out there today, but we just gotta we gotta play more as a team, and we gotta play good in all three phases, which we did in a day. We're gonna be able to. Um, to look at the mistakes we made, we got to get them corrected.